Hi, welcome to Amosmith.com. This is bullet casting basic equipment. And during this introduction, I'm going to show you the basic equipment that you're going to need to start your own bullet casting. One of the first things I want to make sure I emphasize with you is safety. Lead is hot. The fumes are toxic and you're going to need ventilation. But besides the ventilation, you're going to need stuff to protect your skin and your eyes. Now, these gloves that you see before you are welding gloves. They're fairly comfortable. They're not super, super hot and even in the summertime. But they will definitely save your fingers if something goes wrong. And the glasses are an absolute must. You must protect yourself when you're casting because if you don't, you're going to injure yourself and you don't want that. Okay, I want to introduce you to some of the alloys that we're going to be going through in our tutorials. The lead ingot here is actually pure lead. It's from roofing lead. It's about as pure as you're going to get. It's not actual pig lead, but it works great. And the spool is plumber's tin. It's 98% pure tin with a little bit of copper in it. And that's good for adding to wheel weights. Then right here we have wheel weights. You can get these at your local tire store. I get all my lead for free and you can too. You just have to ask around. Now this alloy here is called linotype. It's extremely hard and it's extremely desirable to get for casting your bullets. Now with all these alloys you see before you, you can mix them together to get different consistencies and eventually I'm going to show you how to cast two different alloys together keeping them separated in order to make a soft nose bullet sort of like a nozzle partition. Okay, I want to introduce you to some of the types of bullet molds that are out there. Now these, these molds I have before you aren't the entire gambit of molds but it's a real basic assortment. Right here we have a basic single cavity mold. Here is a hollow point mold with the hollow pointer. This is a double cavity mold and here is a six cavity gang mold. Now these three molds up front are iron molds and the six cavity gang mold is an aluminum mold. Molds were also made out of brass. All of them are very good and really it depends on the company you buy from and the amount of money you want to invest into a mold as to the quality. Something else you want to invest into is a mallet. This little plastic mallet here is used to break open the sprue plate in order to facilitate getting the bullet out of the mold itself. You never want to hit a hot bullet mold or a cold bullet mold for that matter with a steel hammer. You want to use either wood or plastic. You can even go to the hardware store and get a um, wooden hammer handle and use that. The next thing you need is a furnace to melt your lead. Now the kind you get is entirely up to you. There are several different types. This is a lead production pot and this one holds 20 pounds. Now you can get a bottom pour mold or you can get one you use a lead dipper. I prefer to use a bottom pour mold myself. Something else you want to keep on hand is a box with a towel in it. And the reason why you want this box and a towel is so that when you break open your mold you have some place to collect your bullets when they come out. Now what the box and the, and the towel is for, the towel braces or cushions the impact of the bullet. Even though they're solid as they come out the mold, they're still very hot and they're still soft. And you can dent them if you just drop them into a box. And you want to avoid the bullets hitting each other as they're coming out. Another thing you want to have is a crucible. It doesn't have to be a crucible. It could be an old can, like a soup can, but it has to be dry. And this is where you scrape your dross, which is your impurities that float to the top of the lead, in order to discard it. What you see before you here is a piece of paraffin wax. Now the paraffin wax I use to flux my mix. This helps the impurities the dross as it's referred to as, to flow to the top. Helps purify the mix. Now you can use B 
use wax. You can use paraffin wax, or you can buy a specially designed flux from Brownells or through uh, Midway called Marvelux. Do not use plumber's flux. It's the acid-based flux and will irritate your eyes. What I have before you here is gas checks. These are used for bullets that have a gas check shank on it. What it basically does is it acts as a heat shield to reduce gas cutting. It allows you to achieve higher velocities and it also reduces leading quite significantly. Now gas checks are made by several different companies. These ones you see before you are made by Hornady. Lyman also makes them. Another piece of equipment you're going to need is a lubricizer. You don't have to get one as elaborate as this Lyman 450 as you see here. But you need something to cut your bullets down to size. When they drop out of the mold, they're usually about two thousandths too big. And what this does, not only does it size the bullets to the proper diameter, it also forces the grease lubricant into the grease grooves that are designed into the bullet itself. Lee makes one that fits into your reloading press. It's much more affordable and it does a very good job. And it also will seat your gas checks as well. When you buy your lubricizer, whether it's an RCBS, a Seiko, a Star, or the Lyman, you're going to need specific size dies in order to uh, size your bullet. Now this particular one here is made by RCBS for the Lyman. It also fits the RCBS tool as well. The Seikos are proprietary size. So if you buy a Lyman or an RCBS, their dies are interchangeable. Now what this one does is it sizes it to the exact size that I want it to. You can buy them in different sizes. And also with the holes you see on the side there, it forces through the pressure of the, of the lubricizer, it pushes the lubricant into the bullet. Okay, what you see here is lubricant. Now, the stick on the top here is a commercial lubricant that I bought at a gun club. You can buy it, it fits into your lubricizer quite easily. And the stuff below it is homemade lubricant. Now I'm going to show you how to utilize both. I'm going to show you how to make your own lubricants at home. This is an older book, but low data really never goes obsolete. Now you want good loading data for cast bullets. And you cannot mix and match jacketed bullet loads with cast bullet loads. They just don't work that way. So get yourself a book on cast bullet making and get some low data to go with it. Now we're going to go through low development and we're going to go through all the ins and outs of your bullet making techniques through these tutorials. Thanks for watching.